We're here at uh, the corner of 11th and <laughs> Sass Drive at STC headquarters in Regina. Wait! Mike Can't stop Bill 40! I'm over here, by the way, in case you can't, uh, you can't see me. Before we begin, I want to recognize that we gather on Treaty 4 ter ter territory for this important event. Oh, it's Kent over there, okay. My name is Kent Peterson, and I'm an organizer with the Own It Campaign, which is an initiative to protect our Crown Corporations and public services. Friends, the SAS Party government lied to you. Yep. When they said they wouldn't sell or wind down any crown, they lied. And just a year ago, during the election, when Bradwell said he wouldn't touch the crowns if elected, he lied. They are dismantling STC, a crown corporation with 70 years of history in Saskatchewan, and it will have real impacts on real people. One of those people is Susan Suick. She travels at least once a month from Loon Lake, which is in northwestern uh, Saskatchewan, to Saskatoon for cancer treatments. Susan can drive, but she says getting, after getting cancer treatments, she usually doesn't feel like driving home afterwards. Quote, it just takes the stress out of my trip, she says. Of course, Susan is not alone. In 2016, the Canadian Cancer Society helped 300 people fighting cancer to take the bus to and from their communities and into the city for treatment. A Cancer Society representative says they are, quote, receiving calls from people worried about whether or not they can continue their treatment. And when asked about these concerns that people's ha people have, in some cases, literally concerns for their lives, what was SAS Party Minister Joe Hargrave's response? Well, he said there are lots of people with cancer and they'll just have to figure it out. From STC workers and their union, from libraries and students, patients and their families, we've heard from First Nations leaders like Chief Bobby Cameron, from medical agencies, from seniors and their advocates. Closing STC is a bad idea and we have to stop it. In fact, I am increasingly convinced that the only people in Saskatchewan who think shutting STC is a good idea are the old... Yeah, I better hold on to that. Highway robbery. <laughs> but we must not forget, the SAS Party government is just getting warmed up. They have introduced a piece of legislation called Bill 40, the Crown Corporation Privatization Law. And if passed, it will allow them to close, restructure, or sell out SASTEL, SGI, or any crown without holding a referendum and without asking you, Saskatchewan voters. What they did to STC was a warning shot to all crowns. We are less than 60 days away from losing our crowns forever. But we're not going to let that happen. Because this is it. This is our final straw. This is our line in the sand. And together we can send a strong message to the provincial government. We are going to make damn sure that the Saskatchewan Transportation Company is around a heck of a lot longer than the Saskatchewan Party government. sure that this provincial government will never get another chance to touch a single additional crown because we will stop Bill 40. <laughs> Friends, let me introduce our next speaker. Uh, her name is Michelle and she uses and relies on STC for transportation and she wants to tell you uh, her story. So please welcome Michelle. and if I don't have the bus to go to and from, say, Saskatoon, 
I have to rely on friends or family, and not everybody has that time to take other people places and be their chauffeur. Whereas I can just go to at the STC bus, get on the from the uh, Anti-Poverty Ministry here in Regina is going to talk a bit about how these cuts impact some of our most vulnerable uh, people in the city. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> well, there's no way to whitewash this. This was an awful cut in an awful budget. In a very real sense, Saskatchewan is not the same without STC. Saskatchewan is not fully Saskatchewan without SDC. SDC connects us, it's been our lifeblood, and it's served the common good. At the Regina Anti-Poverty Ministry, we stand in solidarity with those workers whose jobs have been cut, good jobs that have employed workers providing exemplary service, this makes no economic sense whatsoever. None. We also know the impact of this cut on users. The vast majority of Saskatchewan residents have benefited from STC, but those who will be most hurt by it include the people that we work with on a regular basis. Our office works with and on behalf of low-income people, not only in urban Saskatchewan, but also rural and northern Saskatchewan. And while the issues that we deal with have more similarities than differences, one of the recurring themes with those we work with from rural and northern Saskatchewan is the need for medical travel. And STC has been an absolute mainstay. So while we all benefit from STC, this cut will most impact rural and northern people, seniors, low-income people, people with disabilities, and persons with serious health concerns. But hey, somebody has to pay for these corporate tax cuts. Somebody has to ensure that the needs of wealthy interests inside and outside the province are met. And for those of you who are like Sheldon Cooper, that was sarcasm. Austerity hurts the most vulnerable most. And these cuts have long-term costs for all of us. And that is why we must fight back against this cut and against this budget. With that in mind, with that in mind, I want to invite you all to a presentation by John Clark of the Ontario Coalition Against Poverty on Friday, April the seventh, at Westminster United Church at seven p.m. That's the that's the corner of Thirteenth and Cameron. 
John Clark has a long history of being a part of struggles against austerity in Ontario as well as connections to fights against austerity internationally. So I hope to see you there. Keep up the fight. Save SDC. And thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, please join me in welcoming Kelsey Morrison, and she's from the group called Students Mobilizing Against Cuts. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, I first of all want to thank all of you for coming out today in austerity to this newly released 2017-2018 Saskatchewan budget. I know that for many of us, although we were expecting severe budget cuts, that this budget has gone beyond what was expected. It has been a shock to many. Many have lost their jobs, and it seems that they will continue to. Uh, to introduce myself, my name is Kelsey Morrison, and I'm a representative of SMAC, which is Students Mobilizing Against Cuts. Uh, <laughs> I'm shaking because I'm really cool. Uh, so we are a student-led group that organized the day after the budget was released. Uh, we quickly got together, and we're going to continue to stay strong. So as students and our supporters, we are here to stand for our future. A future for all Saskatchewanians, regardless of generation or age, whether settler or indigenous, have uninhibited access to community services like transportation, libraries, education, and care. So as has been outlined in this rally today, the STC is a vital resource to Saskatchewan residents, and SMAC would like to highlight the service that the STC has given students in all of its years. Students rely on public services. Many of us are low income, our parents, and many of us work numerous jobs to get ourselves through school. Public services are vital to our survival as individuals, and we stand strong with the Saskatchewan Federation of Labour in voicing our solidarity against the 2017-18 budget release. So, let's rise above and stand together against austerity. to uh, SMAC's rally um, on Thursday, March 30th at noon. Uh, we're all meeting at, the Vic at Victoria Park. Uh, we're going to take the streets all the way to the legislative building where we'll have speeches at 12.50 p.m. And also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. SMAC. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kelsey. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Uh, she was the first ever chief of the Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations and is currently the first vice chief of the FSIN. Uh, please welcome the Kimberly Jonathan. Good afternoon, family. Those are all of our teachings as we're provided to relax and enjoy what's around us. We're here as family, we're not here as um, of, um, First Nations and non-First Nations sensei. <laughs> um, so what I'm here to say is a lot of, um, this is a lot of lost opportunity. Opportunity for those traveling for health care, opportunity for those to be able to get the, gather the education. Our students are most vulnerable, those that are going to be infected, uh, affected. So I thank each and every one of you that are here to help voice that STC is not to make money. STC is to help and to help be neighbors and to help be kind people and to think about those people that need this travel service. So we need to stand together and voice and continue to say this is not okay. It's not okay to be able to make our most vulnerable even more vulnerable. And despite the dishonest budget, despite what is going on with uh, those powers that be, we need to ensure that we remain strong, we need, remain steadfast for all those that need our voice, all those that need our help. And we have to think about the safety. I think about Highway of Tears. I think about what's going to happen if people have to hitchhike. If, if our women, our men, our children, our grandparents have to hitchhike. And all of the missing and murdered Indigenous women that we hear in the media today What's going to happen in BC? What happened in BC could possibly, more than likely, happen here in Saskatchewan, and we won't stand for that. So 
in our uh, native languages out of Dakota, out of Cree, I thank you all of our relatives. Kananaskum Pinawa, Kakio. Thank you, Vice Chief Jonathan. Uh, our next speaker is a strong voice on Regina City Council for the services and good jobs that Crowns provide our city and surrounding area. Please welcome Ward 3 City Councilor Andrew Stevens. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. What a cloudy day in Regina. I think it's been like that since Budget Day, right? <laughs> We all knew leading up to Budget Day things were going to get bad, right? We saw on the horizon every month a new statement about how bad the budget was going to be. Mismanagement led to a billion dollar deficit very quickly. We also knew that healthcare amalgamation was on the horizon. Same kind of threat posed against education school boards. Janitors, hundreds lost their jobs. Well paying living wage employment across the province ignominiously destroyed. And what does the minister responsible for this say? This is a great opportunity for the business community that can now seek these lucrative contracts. But it got worse on budget day, didn't it? 100% funding cut for libraries in Saskatoon and Regina. PSD increases, consumption tax exemptions ended. They're going to hurt the most vulnerable people in our cities and our communities and across this province. And how do we finance that? Well, let's cut taxes for corporations and personal income taxes. Even though the, the Premier himself admits that they were only able to fund infrastructure, they were only able to fund increases in spending and tax cuts to resource revenues, that have gone down and said they continue to make the same mistakes over and over again. And of course, what do we see? The winding down of SDC, which is one of the reasons we're here today. Don't privatize when you can just destroy. Why think about this as an important public service when you can think of it as an efficiency game by winding it down? And who's affected by this? First off, my personal connection is my mom, who doesn't drive and her only way to come down to Regina is on the SDC. And secondly, my mother-in-law, but maybe this one will help everything around the house. <laughs> You're welcome, man. You can bring time. Overnight, hundreds of jobs, well-paying jobs across our province, evaporate. What does that mean to communities? People that go into work one day thinking, this is a career, I have my there's a retirement at the end of it for me. No, not today. And I think, it really says something about transformational change. Fend for yourself. Are you a patient that requires to come into the cities for health care? Fend for yourself. Are you a senior or someone who can't drive for whatever reason, and you just import intercity travel? Fend for yourself. That's the message that we're seeing today. Efficiencies over people. Now that brings us to Bill 40. Terrible thing on the horizon. It started with SaskTel. Why not privatize something that makes a lot of money? Really, let's wind down SDC, sell a crown corporation that brings in millions of dollars to this province, same thing with liquor stores, etc. You can't change the definition of a word. You sell something that belongs to the people, a crown corporation, that's privatization. Doesn't matter if it's 1% or They are part of the social and political fabric in our community. 6,600 people in Regina alone rely on Crown Corporations as a source of well-paying employment. Living wages. And most importantly, they belong to us. Millions of dollars are invested in our communities through a form of social, corporate social responsibility. Community organizations. Activities that we cherish as part of the fabric of our community funded by Crown Corporations. We are all shareholders in this, as citizens, as yes, residents of Saskatchewan. Yeah. What do we say to the government when they want to sell that without our permission? Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I'm serving notice this evening at uh, City Council that reaffirms our community's commitment and our city's commitment to publicly owned enterprises that provide high quality, affordable infrastructure and services. And the last thing I'll say here is kind of spinning what Brad Wall is pretty much thinking with how he's dealing with the deficit. And let's take advantage of this crisis. 
Never before have we seen the type of mobilization across small towns and even rural Saskatchewan against what the Saskatchewan party has done in this budget. Ending the SDC hurts all communities. Cutting library funding hurts all communities. This is an opportunity not unlike what the communities and unions saw in the 1990s that led to the days of action. Teachers, health care funding, education funding, costs are going up as the funding for these services is going down across this province. So I think this is a, a, an important opportunity for solidarity across communities and across organizations in this, in this city. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. The workers at SDC are, are unionized with the Amalgamated Transit Union, and I'm very happy to introduce our next speaker to you. Uh, his name is Paul Thorpe, and he's president of ATU uh, Canada. So please welcome Paul. Thanks, Ken. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming out and showing support for this atrocity that your provincial government has done. In 1946, STC was designed for the working Canadians to get to and from where they need to go. Your government is putting humanity with a price tag on it. Shame. For years, decades, rural and northern communities have depended on STC the workers here love their jobs and now are told, we're sorry, but you're no longer here. The people that depend on STC are being told, here's a taxi chit to get you where you need to go. The money that they are spending is atrocious when they already have the infrastructure in place. This is where it begins. You all today, spread the word. Get the citizens to stand up and demand the transit that they deserve. Reverse this decision. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming to this rally and thank you to our speakers. Friends, here are my calls of action to you. One, phone, write, and go visit your MLA and tell them to save STC and stop Bill 40. Do it early and do it often. The second thing you can do is go to www.ownyoursask.ca and send a letter opposing cuts and privatization. And finally, plan our next community action. What is your great idea to keep the pressure on this provincial government? Is it a rally or a town hall or door knocking or petitioning? What are you going to plan to save STC? And if you need help organizing that, feel free to contact me, Kent Peterson, by calling the Saskatchewan Federation of Labor office.